This video is all about tips and tricks for using the Mac and Mac OS. This video is sponsored by Drafts. Let's get into it. Let's start by talking about the dock. You can move the dock to different sides. This can be done by right clicking on the dock break or going into settings. I prefer mine on the left side. When moving the cursor along the dock, there is a magnification effect. You can change this magnification effect in settings. Personally, I just turn it off. You can change the scale of the dock as well by clicking on it and dragging the dock break. Because I don't use the magnification setting, I just set the dock to be as big as possible. You can also set the dock to be hidden as well. Just right click on it and select hide dock. Then you can use the cursor to reveal it. I use a third party application called hide dock. This allows me to set custom behavior for my dock. When just using my MacBook as a laptop, the dock is hidden. But when I plug it into a monitor, the dock stays visible because I have a lot more space for Windows. Another setting I change is turning off recent apps in the dock. These just take up space and I've never really needed them. Go into System Settings, Display and Dock, and turn off Show Recent Apps. As most of you know, you can add and remove applications from the dock. But you can also add folders from Finder to the dock as well. Just drag them to the dock between the break and the trash bin. You can change a few settings on how these behave. Right click on them and you can change how the folder is previewed in either a stack or folder mode. Stack will show the files that are inside the folder. Folder will just show the folder icon. You can also change how the files will look inside the folder. There's grid, list, and automatic view. Personally, I really like putting folders I access a lot in here. I keep applications, documents, and downloads here. The menu bar is another major piece of macOS UI. The date and time section can be clicked on to bring up both Notification Center and Widgets. A quick side note, I really dislike how these two are combined together. It makes for a really busy UI interaction and these could be spread out to be a little bit nicer. You can clear out any notifications by clicking on X. Unfortunately, there is no way to clear all notifications at once. If you scroll to the bottom, you'll see an edit button. Here you can add widgets to this section. These are the same type of widgets that are on the iPhone and iPad. Next to the date and time, you should see a preference icon. This is Control Center. Here you can enable or disable Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and AirDrop. You can also control brightness and volume levels, audio playback, screen mirroring, and stage manager. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory, but the one I want to point out is screen mirroring. If you're on the same network as an Apple TV, you can mirror your computer's display to it. This is great for work presentations or just showing something off to friends or family. You can change what is displayed in Control Center by going into System Settings Control Center. Here you can enable accessibility features, fast user switching, and more. You can remove some items from the menu bar. Hold down the command key and click and drag the icon until you see an X appear next to it, then let go. I use a third party app called Bartender to clean up my menu bar and to hide apps I don't use or aren't needed in the moment. The desktop is a place I typically like to keep clean, but there are some useful tips for taking advantage of it. Select Finder and then go into Settings. You can select which drives and storage devices show up on your desktop from here. In the same window, you can also define what your default folder should be when you open up a new Finder window. You can also right click on the desktop, select show view options and change the position and size of the label that is next to your items as well. Also in that right click menu for the desktop, there is the ability to use stacks. Stacks are a way to group files together to help keep your desktop clean. By default, stacks will group the same kind of files together. So PDFs with PDFs, images with images, and so on. You can change how stacks work in that right click menu, or you can just turn them off altogether. The final option in this menu is the ability to import from your iPad or iPhone. In this menu, you can select your device and choose to take a photo, scan a document, or sketch something. Once you do one of those three things on your iOS device, it will then import that file to your Mac. I find the scanner option to be incredibly useful. This video is sponsored by Drafts. Drafts is one of my all time favorite applications. You can go years back in my video catalog and you can see me talking about it. Drafts is a text editor, but it's also so much more. Drafts is all about speed. When you open it, you're greeted with a blank document. 
This way you can write what is in your head and get back to what you are working on quickly. Drafts isn't just about inputting text though. There's also actions for taking that text to other apps and services. Whether it's turning your document into a PDF or posting to a service like Mastodon. You can build these custom actions or go check out the drafts directory for pre-built ones made by very smart community members. There's even custom themes you can install to make drafts look the way you want. Drafts is a part of the whole Apple ecosystem, iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, and the Mac. And the Mac app is extremely good. It's just as fast as the iPhone counterpart. It has support for all the native Mac features you would expect like keyboard shortcuts, multi-window support, and more. The thing that I really love about Drafts is that it scales to your needs. So it can be a scratch pad for something that you're just, you know, writing down like URLs or thoughts that pop into your head throughout the day. Or it can be a full-fledged note-taking app with tags and workspaces in this whole system. I use Drafts all day long. I use it to save some links, uh, write some notes of stuff that pops into my head, and work off some templates that I've built in Drafts. Drafts is free to download, so go check it out. I'm gonna put some links in the description below to where you can go download Drafts for the various platforms. My thanks to Drafts for sponsoring this video. Managing Windows is a big part of using the Mac. You can double click at the top of any window to make it full screen. You can change the behavior of this in settings, desktop and dock to be either minimize or do nothing if you want it to be something different. Spaces is one of my favorite ways to manage different groups of windows. You can get to spaces by three fingers swiping up on a trackpad or hitting the F3 key on an Apple keyboard. You can change the keyboard shortcut for this in settings, keyboard, keyboard shortcuts, mission control. You can create a new space by hitting the plus button or dragging a window over the plus button and letting it go. If you do that, it will automatically move that window into that space. You can drag and drop different windows into different spaces from Mission Control. To close out any space, just hover over it and hit the X button. Any windows that were in that space will automatically get moved to the previous space. One interesting feature of space is that each space can have a different wallpaper background if you set it up to be that way. I use spaces to break up the different kinds of work I do. So space one is for admin stuff, space two is for creative work, and space three is for communication. When it comes to positioning windows, I've long felt Apple should borrow from Microsoft the snapping window feature. Luckily, there are a ton of third-party apps that replicate this feature. The one I use is Better Snap Tool. This allows me to drag windows to the left or the right side to take up 50% of the screen or drag a window to the top to make it full screen. There are other options, but these are the ones I use the most. Full screen apps have been around for a really long time and have never gotten much traction. You can hit the green button to make a window go full screen. Full screen mode is a great distraction-free alternative to windowing. If you hover over the green button, instead you'll get some options for doing split view. It's very similar to iPadOS's split view. You can have two apps side by side and work between them. You can hover over the green button in this mode to replace one of the two windows, make one full screen, or go back to the traditional desktop mode. The other two buttons are the red and yellow ones. These serve important purposes as well. The red one closes the current window without closing the whole app. The yellow one minimizes the current window. You can choose in system settings, desktop and dock as to whether this minimizes into the dock as a separate window or into the app icon. I personally choose the app icon because it makes things much cleaner. Heading back to that green button for a bit, you might see an option to move that window to an iPad. This is called Sidecar. This allows you to use your, an iPad as another monitor. You can open applications, manage files. It works just like a second monitor for a Mac. But personally, I prefer using Universal Control. Universal Control automatically pairs when you bring an iPad close to it that's signed into the same Apple ID. You can then push the cursor from your Mac over to your iPad. This way, you are using the keyboard and mouse that is paired with your Mac on your iPad. No need to pair a second keyboard and mouse. You can move your cursor between the two devices and whatever you select, that is where the keyboard will work. I love putting my iPad next to my Mac and having stuff up like my task manager. 
It gives me more space on my Mac to work on creative stuff and makes my iPad a true second display for the Mac without needing to go into some remote desktop mode. Spotlight is key for opening and finding anything quickly on the Mac. You can get to it from either the menu bar or pressing the keyboard shortcut command space. With Spotlight, you can quickly launch applications, open files, or find an email. But there's so much more to it than that. In Spotlight, you can run shortcuts from wherever you are in the OS. This is a great way to trigger an automation. You can also search for images. This includes options from your photo library for subject matter or people. You can also get web results as well. You can also start a timer from Spotlight. Type start timer and then set how long the timer should go for. Spotlight has a built-in calculator so you can do calculations right from there. Conversion systems for measurements, temperature, money, and more. And contact lookup as well. Finder is the backbone of the Mac where you access everything that is on your drive. One of my favorite features is Quick Look. When you have a file selected, hit the space bar. This will open that file instantly in a preview window called Quick Look. Now, this was a much bigger deal back when spinning hard drives were a thing and it took a few seconds to launch an app. With Quick Look though, you can select a range of files, hit the space bar, and arrow through them. I find this really handy for looking through photos in different directories. There are a few different ways you can modify Finder. First, you can drag and drop folders into the favorites section. You can also rearrange what is in here as well. Drag and drop a folder outside of it to remove it from the favorites section. Under view, you can enable the path bar. This will show the path of the current folder. You can also right click on this and copy the full path. Also, you can launch a terminal window with that folder being the directory. That is incredibly nice. Under that same menu, you can also enable the status bar. This will show you how much free space is still available on the drive you have selected. You can set a default view for Finder. First, set Finder to whatever view you want it to be, then right click in a blank area and select View Options. Here you can specify to always open in your current view and to browse in that view as well. Right click on the toolbar in Finder and select Customize Toolbar. Here you can pick from different options and menus to add to the Finder's toolbar. Quick side note, this feature is in a lot of different apps that have toolbars, so just right click on a bunch of toolbars. Personally, I remove the tags button and add get info, eject, and connect to server. Speaking of connect to server, when in Finder, you can hit command K to quickly launch the connect to server window. You can use this to connect to any network share. You can set a default application to open a file by right clicking on it. Select get info and select the open with dropdown. Here you can pick any application that is supported with that file type. Select the one you want, then you can hit the change all button underneath the dropdown and it will change every file that has that type to open with that application. This is the best way to set something like a default PDF viewer or text editor. Tags are supported in Finder. Personally, I'm not a big user of tags, but there are a lot of clever ways you can use them. You can assign a tag to a file by right-clicking on it and selecting one of the colored tags. You can click on the tag button to create a new tag with a specific label. In Finder, you can search for those tags. It will then bring up all the files that have that tag assigned to it. This is a great way of grouping projects or different kind of work together that may be saved in different locations. One of my favorite features in Finder and a lot of other applications is tab support. Just like in Safari, you can hit Command T to create a new tab in your current Finder window. This is also supported in a lot of other applications, including Terminal. There are a lot of interesting settings that can be tweaked in system settings. Honestly, I can make a whole video about that, but for now, I pulled out some of my favorites. In Accessibility, Siri, there's an option to enable Type to Siri. This allows you to just type a command to Siri instead of talking to it, which to me makes more sense on the Mac. Speaking of Siri, in the Siri section of settings, you can change how to trigger Siri. I just set it to be globe space, so that way I don't have to hold down the keyboard shortcut. Under desktop and dock, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's a button labeled hot corners. Hot corners allow you to move that cursor into various corners and trigger different things. I use these to jump to my desktop quickly and to start the screensaver. 
But there are a ton of uses like putting your display to sleep, locking your computer, using Quick Note, and more. Under keyboard, there's a button called keyboard shortcuts. You can use this option to change system-wide keyboard shortcuts. But the feature I really like is app shortcuts. This allows you to pick an app that is installed on your Mac and make a keyboard shortcut for anything that is in the menu. Just select the app that you want, type the menu item exactly how it's spelt, and then add a keyboard shortcut. Just be sure not to assign a shortcut that is already being used. Mac OS has built-in dictation, and it's pretty good. You can change how to start it in the same keyboard settings menu. I just leave it on the default, which is hit control twice. Low power mode has been added to MacBooks. You'll find it under the battery option. You can set it to always turn on when you're on battery or plugged into a power adapter. Not exactly sure why you would need that last one though. Or you can just set it to be always on. You can also turn it off from here as well. And just like on iOS, this will give you more battery life. If you don't have Touch ID on your Mac, you can set up your Apple Watch to unlock your Mac when you wake it up. This also allows you to use your Apple Watch when you need to unlock an application and works with Apple Pay as well. Preview is macOS's built-in PDF viewer. It has some really handy tools built into it. This includes the ability to highlight, underline, and strike through text. Also the ability to add text box to a PDF. You can even add sticky notes so you aren't changing the text or the look of the actual document. But my personal favorite is the ability to add a signature. I do this a lot for contracts. I've talked a lot about shortcuts over the years, and shortcuts on the Mac can do a few things that shortcuts on the iPhone and the iPad can't. First, there are three additional places you can run shortcuts from. First is the menu bar. You can add shortcuts to this section and have them appear in the menu bar icon. Second is via keyboard shortcuts. Select the information button in a shortcut and then click on add keyboard shortcut. This shortcut will work system wide with this keyboard shortcut. So wherever you are in the OS, you can run it. And then the third is from finder in the services menu. These can run when you select a file. If you right click on a file and go down to services, you can run a shortcut against that file. In finder, they will appear in the column view with the file information. When using the Finder or Services menu, you can have it provide an output. For example, if you make a shortcut that creates a new file, it will output to the directory you are in instead of you needing to build logic for the shortcut to save that file to some particular place. QuickTime is the built-in media player, but most probably don't know it works for recordings as well. Open up QuickTime and click on File. There are three options here. New movie, new audio, and new screen recording. New movie will default to the camera and mic and will allow you to record. New audio will just use your microphone. This is a great way to record a podcast for free. Screen recording will record what is happening on your Mac. This is great for making quick tutorials. You can even have it turn on your microphone so that you can talk about what is happening as you're doing the screen recording. Speaking of recording on the Mac, if you need a higher quality webcam, you can actually use your iPhone. This works in QuickTime, FaceTime, and a bunch of third-party applications. Unlock your iPhone and bring it near your Mac. In the application you're in, go in and select your iPhone to be the camera. This way you have a really high quality camera ready to be used. You can also use your iPhone as the microphone as well. When using your iPhone as a camera, you can use a new app called DeskView. When your iPhone is on a tripod or a mount, you can launch this app. It will use the ultra wide angle camera to get a top down shot of what is on your desk. This is great if you're demoing something for the people that you're on a call with. So that's it. Those are my tips and tricks for using Mac OS. If you have a tip for using Mac OS and it's something I didn't cover, write it down in the comments below. I know I would appreciate reading about it, but I'm sure others would as well. My thanks to Drafts for sponsoring this video. Again, I'll put a link in the description below to where you can go download it for free. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.